What's happening, everybody? You are back on the Triple L Show, Lamont and Larry Live. We got our boy T Streams. We might have to change the name of the show to T L L something. I don't know. We'll come up with something. What's good? L L T. What's good, folks? How y'all doing? Larry, how you feeling? Man, I'm good, man. Everything's everything. Just you know, living that that uh that quarantine, stay at home mode. So. You know, I'm just uh, I have to uh, I have to drink some sodas because I have to uh, I have to keep a uh, a uh, rationing my beer. I only have an 18 pack of of Corona, and I have to ration that out. I don't know how long that's gonna last. <laughs> hey, hey man, you can go you can go to the store just throw on a mask, go get you some more Ronas. Man, I'm not going to the store if I can. I've been out the house in a couple of days. I'll probably go for a walk tomorrow, but I'm trying to I'm trying to stay up out the I'm trying to stay out the air. Yeah. Uh, hey, I'm, with that, bro. I'm with that. So, so for everybody wondering, we hope you all are being safe and in and you're avoiding what's going on outside so that we can bend this coronavirus curve. We've got a little bit of entertainment we're gonna to try to bring to y'all today and bring some life gains. This is what we're going to cover today. Is it Floyd's fault for Yaya's Mayweather's crazy behavior? She got into a lot of trouble this weekend. Ezra Miller, he choking bitches. Y'all know him. He played the Flash in the DC universe. Banks being funny with the corona money. Nitro IPTV, y'all, being food. Let's start with Floyd Mayweather's daughter. For those of you that don't know, Floyd Mayweather daughter is the side piece to this dude's name, Young NBA, or something to that effect. Man, I can't keep up with y'all folks and y'all young names nowadays. I but know. Anyway, she rolls up to his crib. His baby mama, who is currently pregnant, is in there. Y'all, y'all goes in there, gets into a fight with her. The baby mama, who's currently pregnant, starts whipping that hind part. And y'all, y'all runs in the kitchen, gets a knife stabs him up and people are saying this behavior with Yaya could be because Yaya is modeling what she's seen her dad doing and his behavior beating women. Fellas, I give the floor to you. Larry, give me your take first. Man, I'll tell you, I mean, I, I'll be honest with you, I don't really know who either one of these people are. I know Floyd Mayweather, so I figure, okay, that's his daughter, I get it. But this young NBA dude, I have no, I, I couldn't figure out if this was an NBA player whose last name was Young or <laughs> what his deal was. Struggling. I, 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 I was, I finally figured out he was a rapper. But you know, I can't figure out all these little dudes running around called Young, Young NBA, Young Booty Stain, Young, you know, Young Coochie Pop. Just everybody with all these little, you know, the baby, doggy, baby. You know, oh, man. my baby, your baby, mama, everybody named baby too. I heard. I mean, how, what, when did it become that 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 rappers want to come up with the softest ass names? Do you remember when people used to have names like Killer Mike, you yeah. know, and names where you couldn't even put the real name on an album cover. Niggas with attitudes, they had to bleep the name out. Now they right. got these little dudes running around talking about my name is is my name yeah. little popcorn, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Nightshade, nigga. You ain't in the comic book, what? you know. I mean, as far as far as what's her name stabbing dude up. I mean, first of all, there's a couple things I feel about this. One, your dad is rich as shit. Right. I mean, he is rich, rich, and and more rich. I mean, he could probably go take a fight today with some with some tomato can and make another forty million just because people want to see him fight. You know, and he can do it in an empty arena on pay per view. He'd still make that money. And you're up there being somebody's side chick. I mean, for real. How about you take that purple dye out your hair, go put a suit on, and go catch you a hedge fund manager? You know, <laughs> I mean, for what are you thinking? T shirt. And then you're gonna go stab some chick over a dude. I don't understand this whole thing about stabbing somebody over someone else. I mean. I've had I've had people cheat on me before. I'm not going to stab a motherfucker. Oh, deuces, I'm out. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for releasing me. I am out. T3. See, I'm not stabbing somebody over somebody else. Yeah, you cotton picking mine. Drop yeah. the line, P-Stream. Right, man. I'm, I'm going to put it like this, man. 
Thoughts going to do what thoughts going to do. You can be a, a, a broke thought. You can be a rich thought. Or you can you can be a thought that's the daughter of a rich man. So, you know, is that's more of a behavior thing. I don't think uh, I don't think that what she did is I really can't pattern say that she actually patterned that after what what uh, Floyd did to her mom or, or any relationship like that. You know, that's. Man, that's what that's what they doing now, you know, and they you know, these young people, some of them are taking it to this this little baby drama stuff and all this to the they taking it too far. They taking it to the extreme. You know, it's like, you know, that's some straight love and hip hop type stuff, even though I don't think nobody really got stabbed on love and hip hop. But but to be, you know, the, the truth of the matter is, man, that's some really that's really some hood stuff. You know what I'm saying? Some straight, dirty, grimy. Who is yeah. that? You know, I've always said, man, I've always said I would fight. I would fight in a woman's stead, but I'm not fighting for a woman ever, period. I'm just not doing it. I mean, it gets to the point where if if you're messing with some other dude and this dude wanna, comes to want to fight me. And I've had this happen before where dudes come to uh, you know, they're upset. I'm messing with some girl. I'm like, not even not even somebody that I'm that I'm in a relationship with, just some chick back in the day that I was smashing, come wanting to fight me over. I'm like, dude, you want to fight me over a chick? I'm like, I'm not fighting. I've told him, I'm not fighting you over her. She's yours. Take her. You want her? You would to if you were willing to come up here and get your ass stomped out by me and these nine Negroes behind me, you know. <laughs> Then you obviously want her more than I do. Please have her. Take her. I got I, I have I have a team. Larry, I, I'm, I'm like I'm like Larry, the Knicks. I got I'm I like got the I'm like, you know, I have my starting five and a bench. I'm ready to go. You know, Larry, I got a lot of questions about that. Now <laughs> I'm about to go barbershop on you now because it's just uh -oh. us. We, we're gonna act like ain't nobody else watching now. You didn't want to fight over this chick. Does that mean the pussy was horrible? No, it just means there's no pussy that's ever good enough for me to want to fight another man over some okay, chick. Because okay, here's the thing. Okay. I just want to make sure now. Cause here's the thing. She needs to choose. If she <laughs> wants to choose, then she needs to choose. If if, if she's up there running around, see, this is the thing, right? Uh, the only thing I can figure is, is he's some soft cupcake and type dude who is up there falling in love, and so he's upset. Or she was over there lying to him, saying that she was all, you know, being in a, in a relationship with him. Because for me, I'm thinking this is just some chick that I'm having fun with. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just smashing. I'm thinking we're just smashing. So when yeah. some dude comes up and he's angry and wants to fight, I'm like, have her. If she means she's, she, that's, that's not what she means to me. I'm not saying like she's a garbage human being. And you know, if she was, if she was in a car fire, I wouldn't try and open the door and grab her out. But at the same time, I'm not trying to fight anybody over her. She's just, you know, so I, I just, to me, dudes that dudes that want to go fight, do fight other people over a girl or girls want to fight over a guy. I'm like, I mean, if some dude comes up and smacks my wife and calls her a bitch, I'm fucking him up. You know, <laughs> if some dudes harassing my wife, I mean, we're going at it. But if but if it turns out some dude comes to me and says, yo, your wife was with me and I want to fight you because I want to keep her, I'm be like, you don't need to fight me to keep her. All you had to do is let me know she stepped out. She's yours, you know? I mean, so, that's just that's just that's just truth. You can't that's one thing my dad told me a long time ago. You cannot make someone stay with you. If they want to go out, then they're going out. You can't you can you can fight the whole world and they'll keep stepping out. You just have to let them go. T streams, what you say? Yeah, I'm, I think I'm. I think I'm a ride with. Uh, I think I'm a ride with Larry on that. You know, hey, those days. Uh, you know, those days really, man, is they over with. They done. Mm -hmm. Then besides, folks really ain't trying to fight no way. You know, they 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 trying to put you under, and so is to me. It ain't. It really ain't that serious. You know, it is not that serious. But like I said, man, that it's that. That that hood that that hood that's ingrained in you, man, is is something is something that causes you. Because look, I remember, you know, not you know, just thinking back in hindsight, I remember, you know, in times when I was young, you know, 
and would do some old foolish stuff like that. Then I look, I think back and like, damn, man, I was stupid as hell. Why would I, why would I even put myself in that? You know, why would I even put myself in that situation? But, you know, it's, even if I, even if I wasn't married, you know, I still not, you know, I'm still not putting myself to be throwing blows over no, you know, over no peace. But like you said, yeah. some, if, 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 if you violate the union, then I'm then I'm I'm coming for your neck. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Ma marriage is a different degree. Yeah. And to get back to, could she now, there, be is, there is one exception to this, right? There is one exception to this rule, and this is not a matter of I'm going to go fight to keep my wife, but if you know a dude, and he and he gets with your wife. He, he's getting an ass whooping because he knew. Now, see, this is different. If your wife steps out on you or your girlfriend steps out on you with some stranger, you don't owe him. He doesn't owe you any loyalty. He doesn't owe you anything. But if this, uh, but if another man knows your wife is married and he knows you and he steps out with your wife, yeah, he needs that, to be fucked up. That dude, yeah, that, I mean, there's yeah. no if, ands, or bad. He needs to catch an L. And that's, that's just, a, and that has nothing to do with your wife anymore. That has everything to do with you as a man. Him saying, look, I don't respect you. And so you need to go. And I mean, maybe it's just simply taking a baseball cap to one of his knees and the other ankle so he can't walk on both on, on two different parts. Maybe it's just, you know, maybe it's just straight just fading his ass up, just catching him and just fading him up. Either way. But either, I mean, at that point, if, if but that's only if like dude knows you. That's just like, you know, I mean, I hate to say it, but there's some shady people out there that people that you think are your friends. You find out that they're not. I'm lucky I haven't experienced that, but I've heard some stories about yeah, you, dudes, every day. you know, who say like, damn, man, my, my best friend F my girl. Or I found out later that, you know, that that my baby was not my baby. Instead, it's it's my best friends. Well, you need to stop. First, you need to stop calling him your best friend. That's not your best friend. Never was, you know. But in those cases, that dude needs to catch a fade. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, and it's not about getting your girl back. It's just about reestablishing, you know, dominance. <laughs> you don't know, catch something more than that fade. <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, some people. I, I wouldn't recommend killing a dude because I don't, you know, I don't want to see anybody going yeah. going to jail over some over some some half crook hooker, you know. But I mean, you liable to, you liable to go to jail for the beatdown. You might well make him push up some damn daisies if you're gonna have to go to jail and then done you that dirty. Yeah. Well. Yeah, breaking the bro code, man, is like. Mm. Is that that's a whole that's a whole nother level and it's it's really hard to say what you would do you know like it, it, you know you you know that there would be some type of consequence yeah but, yeah but until you actually caught up in that moment and then them 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 thoughts going through your head and you like Ugh. yeah and it could be something simple it could just be like you know maybe before he knows you know maybe it's just something like hey man hey man let's go let's go fishing or something and you take him to the end of the pier and throw his ass off, and then you just leave. Let the nigga <laughs> swim back. You're not trying to kill him. You're just making a statement. You know? No. You, like you, 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 you be done tie some concrete to the dude's ankles, man. Stop lying. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> you be done push him over, put some concrete on his ankles. How he supposed to swim up out of that? You don't need any, you don't need any concrete. Just throw a little chum in the water. See? You know? Oh, my God. <laughs> now, you, now you want us to have a jaw situation going on, man. <laughs> no evidence. That's like that's like the fisherman's version of Tiger King right there. That's, that's, that's some Carol Baskin type shit. Mm. <laughs> At the end of the day, I don't really see how you can tie. I, I can see how people would make an argument for trying to tie Floyd Mayweather to her behavior, seeing that she might have seen these things growing up. But she's not a kid anymore. She's an adult now. And I think that as parents, we all hope that the things we did to raise our child works out well. But we've seen countless amount of times that you can give the child every advantage in life and they still go off the deep end and do some stupid stuff. And so on this one, I'm going to have to say it's all yah ya. I mean, I feel you on this, but let me just say this. And I, and I say this because I've seen this over and over again. I often see where parents... And don't get me wrong, this is not 100%. There are some really great parents out there that just had some rotten apples for whatever reason. But I've seen oftentimes where kids get in a lot of trouble mm -hmm. and their parents sit up there and try and say, oh, excuse me. So I'd say, oh, I tried to give them the best of everything. They lived in a nice neighborhood. They went to a nice school. I had given them nice clothes, all this. But where were you? 
oh, well, I was working because I had to pay for all this stuff I was giving them. So, so yeah, I woke up at, at 6 a.m. so I could be out the office at, at 8.30 or whatever or 7.30. And so they were, I was up and out the house before they even woke up. And then I got home, at, you know, because I worked overtime. So I would get home and spend maybe 30 minutes with them. Then they had to go to bed. So basically, you never were with your kid. Your kid, you know, you were around maybe for a little while on the weekends. But so basically, you have these parents who aren't raising their kids. They're just giving them a whole bunch of material stuff. And then they wonder why their kids grow up to be terrible human beings. And they want to sit up there and try and say, I did the best I could. I gave them everything someone could ever want. That's just not true. Mm. And they, that, you didn't give them the one thing that they needed most, which was you and your 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 love, your your discipline, your knowledge. Your you and know. maybe that's that's working here with this too. So we'll just have to play this story as it comes, and we'll follow back up on it. Next story we're gonna cover for you people that love comics, for you people that love the CW and their comics and their Flash, and for us that have watched that terrible movie. <laughs> the Justice League team up movie. <laughs> the guy that plays the Flash, Ezra Miller, his sweet looking ass. He was in one of his 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 places he loves to have drinks. I think that's the best way to say it. Mm. A fan rose up on him talking to a female fan at that. And he says, Well, you want to do it? And there was a sec, a seven second video of this clip, but then the person who posted it took it down for whatever the reason. He ends up grabbing the chick by the neck, pushing her up against not one wall, but two walls. And we know a Damn. wall ain't got before a corner, so he halfway there. Damn. <laughs> he strings, I'm going to give it to you first. What do you think is going to happen to Ezra Miller? Is he done being the Flash? Absolutely. They probably, yeah, absolutely. They probably going to make a good. They're probably going to make a good example out of them because one, there's no, there's no way to, uh, there's no way to to vindicate his actions. And then two, mm -hmm. if if don't anything happen, the movement is coming for that head. If 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 they don't do anything about it, especially with it being a a, a crime, a, a, an assault crime against a woman. Mm -hmm. Turn around and put him in another movie. I'm almost certain, and, and, and man, I swear, I'm probably 100% positive that the movement, the women movement, is coming after him, and and he'll lose it then if he don't lose it before. But it would probably be in DC's best interest to just go ahead and give him the pink slip, let him ride that consequence out. Hey. Once you 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 making this type of money, you you got this type of you 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 got this type of fame. You cannot be out here doing this garbage, this bull crap. And when you do, there's going to be stiff penalties behind it. So if you look, if you was looking for, if he was looking forward to being in in whatever movie they was getting ready to cast him in as the Flash again, those hopes and dreams should be dashed right about now. He should probably be sitting somewhere in the corner if he's not in jail for assault on a woman. He should be thinking somewhere in this corner, damn, how I just mess up all that future money for whatever reason that caused him to do that. Yeah, now, see, before you, you know go, I got to mention, do y'all remember Cuba Gooding Jr. last year? It wasn't even two days they came for his neck. But yeah. I go to Larry. I mean, this is the wrong. This is the wrong time to go after a woman and do some dickhead shit. But I mean, it really is. You just cannot do that. You just need. I mean, this is a this is a prime example of, of you needing to have your boys around you at all times to check you and keep you in in, in your place. You because I he feel like when, sometimes I feel like Larry. He had the boys with him. They the but ones did he have boys. his boys, or did, did he, he have did he have those Hollywood hanger-ons? No, he had his crew, and his crew were the ones that pulled him off the chick. See, they, they, yeah, I don't know. Then maybe there's just no excuse for him. I mean, because I mean, I mean, there's I mean, there's no excuse either way. But part of me just feels like oftentimes when this stuff happens is when you have a bunch of new people hanging around, a bunch of yes men that just want to be down with the crew. Whereas your real boys from back in the day will, will slap you upside the neck and say, motherfucker, what are you thinking? You yeah. have a $40 million movie you're about to make. You're about to throw it all away on some rando chick that you 
because you because you're upset with her because she just told you that Superman won that road race against you. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> I mean for real. I mean, I mean, ah. Uh, did I they mean, part of stupid is and stupid does. I mean, you can't you can't protect somebody from their own stupidity, and you know. But I I will say this. I mean, it's better to find. It's better that 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 Disney and and you know and uh and DC and all of them find out now, so that so that they can actually get rid of them because it would be a shame if they if they made the movie, they were about to start marketing it. And then all of a sudden this drops and now all of a sudden they have to pull the movie back because they have to go reshoot all his scenes with a different actor. Mm -hmm. So it's better they find out now. Right. You know, he also he also played in the Fantastic Beast series as well. The uh, did he? What was he on there? <laughs> Man, I don't know. I ain't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. I think I saw that, but I don't remember what he played. So it must not have been that impactful. Yeah. Um, but, so you should be hurting now, though. That's for sure. I'm I'm interested to see how they try to spin this because if you watch the video in the beginning, it looks like it could just be him playing with the woman. Right. Now it don't it don't matter it don't matter what his intentions were. The fact that you ran up on a woman, you put your hands on her, and then you took her from one wall to the other one, even if you was playing and she decides that she's upset about that, that right. wall is going to be hurting. And yeah. it came out that she did press a charge. Oh, yeah, he out. Oh, but yeah, he's in, yeah, he's he's done then. I was going to say, if she hadn't pressed a charge or maybe if Ray Donovan got to her soon enough, he could have been like, look, this is the story we're going to spin. It was all a part of a stunt. He was been working on his acting, his 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 stage combat skills, and you are his acting teacher. And we're gonna pay you, and it's gonna quietly go away, you know. But well, if she went and pressed charges, then you know, I guess it's it's all said and done. It's it's official now. Well, yeah. we we know he wasn't, we know he wasn't auditioning to be the Flash as slow as his ass was moving. And if I can get my hands on that video, I'm gonna. Yeah, was, he, was he drunk? Yeah, they they said intoxication was involved on both ends, but still, bruh, <laughs> this Man. is a new era, bruh. Yeah. You better keep your hands in your pocket. And they coming. Yeah, they coming. <laughs> Next Man. story. I need to understand why this is. You know, this is this is a prime example of people needing to learn how to talk shit. People, the good old dozens, people need to learn to play the good old dozens. They need to learn how to talk smack. Because I can tell you right now, I can, if I was super famous and I went to some bar and somebody was popping mad shit, I can tell you right now, I would have that whole place in stitches because I would just lay into them. Before I even would go out, I'd be like, I'd have hooked up with Kevin Hart and be like, yo, just give me a couple aces to put in my sleeve right quick in case someone says something. And just drop them on them. Because most people don't want to get clowned. And when your megaphone is bigger than theirs, that's the last thing they want to do is get clowned. You know? Yeah. So, and then yeah. after you make everybody laugh, you, you tell her, it's all, it's all fun and games. Let me get you a drink. And then she leaves you alone. Everybody's good. You just need to, people need to learn how to, people need to learn how to interact with human beings again. You know? Well, you know, that's just the issue, man. We've become a society where, your interactions are virtual, you know what I'm saying? So it's awkward for people nowadays when they go out in public and stuff like that. And um, I, man, I hope what that they can worry about. Thing. I just hope they can resolve this thing. If he was, if it was just like some joke that went too far, hopefully they can resolve it in a manner that won't ruin his life forever. But if he was really and truly serious. He is going to have to deal with that long hand of the law and the tail whipping of me too. Yeah. I don't think it would. I don't think it would. I don't think that action is actually irreparable. I mean, he'll be able to bounce back from it, but yeah. I think the immediate consequences, which just so happened to be his biggest gig yet, I mm. think that is, was, that is where they're going to, uh, going to make him hurt and feel it at. And, and, Hey, he he probably still get an acting job. He, you know who knows, uh, but something of that magnitude, you know, they may, you know, it may blacklist him for it. Yeah, oh, you know, yeah. he, he's gonna be blacklisted for a little while. You can cool yeah. believe that. 
Yeah. Um, un un unless, if I was his publicist, if I was his male Olivia Pope, I would call that girl. I would say every sweet nothings I can whisper in her ear. I would give her season tickets to all my shows the rest of my entire natural born white life and be like, look, can we go do a press conference together and say it was just a joke? I took it too far. I was a dickhead. I should have I should have never even joked in the manner that I did. Let's rectify this and give her a couple of dollars. Thanks. So when he took it down, man, was it like some type of no, 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 no. He didn't take her down. Oh, okay, okay. He pushed her up against the wall. And like I said, in the video in the beginning, up against the first wall, it looked playful. But then mm. when he when he rushed her to the second wall, it didn't look quite as playful. Uh -huh. And then um, Variety reported that this was a real thing. It wasn't a playful thing. It was a serious thing. I mean, part of me, part of me is thinking, I mean, we shouldn't even really be having a conversation about him saving his career, or resurrecting his career. I mean, part of me is like the dude, the dude effed up. I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I really don't want to see a dude that's putting hands on a woman as playing a superhero. Yeah. You know, I just don't really want to see. I mean, you're going to have movies out there where kids are going to see this. I don't want them thinking this is this is OK behavior, you know, and, and you I know, mean, it's, I'm about surprised. Um, of course, we don't expect this to make the Fox news. <laughs> but right. damn it, if Jamie Fox would have had put his hands on a, a fan in a bar like this, they all, over. Put all over the news the way they did my man Cuba Gooden Jr. Oh, man, he was old. Yeah. But there, there, there is a difference, though. I mean, part of it is there is a racial element to it, but part of it's different. Both of those guys are much, much bigger actors, much bigger names. Both of them are Oscar winners. This dude is, I don't want to call him a scrub because he is in a DC movie, but other than that, he's, he's not He's not A-list, A-list. He's not like he's, <laughs> he's a scrub. No, up on the dude. I mean, my man is not a scrub. My God, he's an A-lister, man. Dang, I'm not calling him an A-lister. He's probably, he may be like a B-plus lister. God, you know, man, you're all harsh on actors. What do you got to do to be an A lister? My goodness, man. The dude, mean, Jamie Foxx is an A lister, you know. Jamie Foxx is probably winner. on to being an A lister. Brad He's Pitt's an A lister. Winner. Jamie Foxx is an Oscar winner. So, you know, I shouldn't even have used Jamie Foxx at all. Let me take it down a peg. How about Michael B. Jordan? He ain't won no Oscars. He's an A lister. Okay. Ezra Miller is an A lister. No. He's a lister. I didn't even know his name. When you said the dude that played Flash, I thought you were talking about the little skinny white kid that played the Flash on on the uh, on the CW show. Now, see, that's a B lister. I think he might be an A lister. That dude's in what, like his ninth season of this show? We're talking about big screen movies, though. Yeah, but you can't. But the thing is now, TV is TV is a whole different realm now. TV is big. It's not like back in the day when people were where people were going on to TV and trying to make it to the movies. You often have people that are going from the movies back to TV because they're doing such great things. So, yeah, yeah. And the yeah. and these CW stars, they may not be in our demographic. Because they're, you know, it's it's generally designed for a younger crowd, but they, I mean, they're pumping out stars. They are pumping out the the current and next generation of big stars. I mean, these, the, I mean, the people are young, they're pretty, and apparently they're good actors. So I don't know, man. I'll I'm, watching, this one. I'm watching the video now. Right. Uh, right. Uh, it's, 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 I don't know. It's hard to tell, man. It's 50, 50. Yeah. I uh, see. Uh, and, and some of that is due to the, 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 the unstableness of the, of the person that's, that's, that's filming. So it's, it's hard to, you know, you see her and it, that, yeah, that's so, exactly what happened. <laughs> that's so, exactly what happened. So, so now, maybe, we, yeah, he's he's sort of slow, but uh, that's I what I said. He can't be the flash <laughs> now, ladies. Not like I mean, I want this exactly. We're not saying that, we're not yeah. saying that one bit. So, I, I don't know, man. They they 
I don't know if, if uh, Warner Brothers and DC want they they may be able they may be able to squ- squ- wiggle up out of that with a little stipend in their pockets or something. They exactly. might. That's if they feel like they need to, because they could very easily just swap him out. I mean, they don't really need. And the only way they, I think, they really need to keep him is if they've already started filming. And yeah. if they filmed significant scenes, like maybe they filmed, you know, if they've only filmed like one scene with him or something, they could easily just just drop him and go swap him out and yeah, and then just reshoot that scene. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, if I was if I was if I was the studio. I dump his ass. I've been like, I've been like, come on, man. You you should know better. Yeah. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna waste my time and my energy and my public relations, you know, dollars trying to rehab your your dumb image. You should have just known don't put hands on people, especially not your fans. This yeah, would have been he could have been different if he got into a fight with his wife. He can always get a job at Tyler Perry Studios. <laughs> right. But this, but this would have been different if he got into a fight with his wife because people would say, OK, this is a personal matter, yada, yada. Maybe the wife came out and said, I'm sorry. I, you know, I, I hit him first. He was he put his hands on my throat because he was trying to keep me at a distance. They could have made up something like that, maybe. But a random fan at a bar while he's drunk. Man, I'm done with you. If I'm the it's studio. He's just a financial liability. You let him get away with it this time. What's he going to do next time? Hit somebody with his car or. Or maybe, you know, or, maybe or, maybe he get the bejesus scared out of him. He learned his lesson this time. Right. Moving right I along. Mean, maybe. Next story for those of you that have followed my channel and Larry's channel way back in the day. I mean, like three years ago. Y'all know that IPTV streams were very hot everywhere. Yep. It, it was like the next wave to cutting the cord, a way to save you money. It was in the gray. Um, not a lot of rules and regulations overseeing the industry, and still not to this day. Hold on, hold on. Before you go any further, YouTube, if you are watching this, if you are hearing this, we are talking about a news program. We are not promoting IPTV. Do not block Lamont's channel anymore. God. Please understand, this is just a discussion of a news story. Okay, continue on. Right. Yeah, because YouTube, y'all have got me real good. I'm losing right. subscribers for the first time since I've ever been on YouTube because of all these blocks and kicking me off for the last six months. Now, help a brother out. But anyway, yeah. some of y'all familiar with Nitro IPTV. Well, they have been sued in the great state of California via tort freak. And it says Universal, Paramount, Columbia, Disney, Amazon, and Netflix have all come together to file a lawsuit against Nitro IPTV for damages in the range of $150,000, which is a drop in the bucket. Name person on the docket, Alejandro Galinda. T-Streams, I give it to you first. What you think? Well, I'll tell you what, man. <clears throat> it's- some service has been taken a blow. Uh, if that's if that's all they got, man, that's a slap on the wrist. They they that's pocket change. Pay that, get up out the folks here, you know, and keep it pushing. But you know, it seemed like it, it do seem like they're they're turning the pressure up just a little bit, you know. Mm-hmm. And so you you do have to, you know, you do have to be careful. Is people gonna stop watching it? No, uh, there's, you know, are these, are these advances and, you know, assaults on different, you know, different groups and stuff like that. Is it going to stop it? I doubt it. So, you know, but you know, it, it, it is something, it is something for, for every, you know, for every owner to, to consider, you know, the possibility and Hey, you know, we we've seen this. We've seen this for for going on for a long time. You know, they, they're not the first and they definitely won't. They definitely won't be the last. But what gets me, man, is how, you know, how they because I looked at I looked at some things, too. And it, it, it seemed like, it, you know, it was you know, it was targeted in one area, not actually the live streams. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, it was just it was just the way everything was sort of worded. And then I'm, it makes you wonder, you know, how did they come up, you know, how did they come up to that, 
you know, to that calculation. And so, uh, hey, so in a sense, it's, you know, in a sense, it's a blessing and a cursing. They've been around for a long time. OK. And so with this, uh, I don't are they I don't even I don't know if they still up or down or not or what. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's definitely time to go back to, you know, go to the drawing board and either hang it up, you know, pay your fine or do whatever it is you got to do. But uh, man, it's, it's another it's another blow to the community. Larry, you know, I, I would be curious to see what the lawsuit says in there. But I'm, I'm pretty sure. You can go to Torrent Freak and download it. They've got okay, a I'll have to take it because I, because to be honest with you, what I'm thinking is because it's such a low amount, mm -hmm. I think really what they want to do is get them to just they probably want to get them to pay it, admit their admit their wrongdoing, mm -hmm. and and shut them down. I think that it sounds like to me like they're more interested in shutting them down than anything else. Because if you try and go and hit somebody with a $10 million lawsuit when you know they can't pay that, that, person, that, that at that end, they're basically just saying, well, okay, well, I'll just either fight it or I'll just shut it all the way down and I'll just reopen it some other name somewhere else. And, and so I think that, you know, they might be saying, okay, it's $150,000. This is nothing to them, but in order to, to, you know, but they may say that they have to admit fault or something. I don't know. It's just, it sounds to me like they're just trying to shut them down versus tr really trying to do anything more with them. And, you know, it is what it is. But, I mean, here's the thing, though. I mean, for all people who do IPTV, do provide IPTV services, and I know a few that do, they know, they, they see the writing on the wall. They know it's coming down at some point. They, these companies have been, they started, they started going after the real big dudes early. That back in the day, they went after, you know, they went after set TV, and they went after uh, they went after what's the other one that the the dude that had put supposedly live streamed the FBI raid on him. Um, Omar. Omar. Yeah, they went after his stuff. They went after they've gone after a number of people. A lot of these services have gotten shut down. And so I think people know, you know, that they're starting to come for the media, the, the you know, the, the mid -tier, the mid tier guys. Or then they're going to start coming for, you know, some of the, the smaller guys. It's happening. And. I, but personally, I think what's really going to be the game changer is I'm starting to see a number of these IPTV services that are coming out of China now. And mm -hmm. you can't do anything with them. I mean, because at that point, it's not a lawsuit. You're going to have to go to the federal government and you're going to have to lobby for trade sanctions. You're going to have to start asking for, you know, for some other sort of, uh, of relief from the government to actually say, hey, we need you to put in legislation that uh, this can't happen or whatever or this, you know, you're, I mean, it's, it's much bigger than just taking out some random, you know, group of guys to court and saying, we want to sue them for copyright infringement. If you have, you know, companies based overseas doing it, especially in China where they just are like, Oh, we don't really care what you guys think. It's more than a few over that way. It, and so, you know, just and and this is one of the things that that sort of interests me is because like um, American or U.S. IP TV services are honestly they're relatively small. They're relatively smaller in comparison to those, you know, to the guys over, like you said, in China and in India and stuff like that. This, you know. Uh, you know, I, and this, this is, you know, this is stuff that I know, you know, you know, I'm I, people that's, that's running 150, 200,000, you know, people. And so, but you don't see, you don't really see those numbers is they're rare here, you know? Right. Uh, so, uh, but they, you, you don't, you don't see them going after, after that way. And, and it's, you know, it's a easy, you know, it's an easy lick when you, when you can do it from you know from this platform and stuff like that but you was right man is when they get these guys and they're giving these these like outstanding amounts like hell they gave what sent what was that 90 million or something yeah something like that <laughs> now all it, it was you already know that you're not even you're not even getting ready to get a tenth of that no nope. yeah. <laughs> Probably even getting ready to get one percent of that, okay? 
And so, you know, the 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 best way the best way for them to do if they're going to continue that, and, and at least until they until they restructure laws that's that's going to iron that's going to ironclad, you know, the the whole industry. Uh, but then too, I see I do see complications, uh, you know, doing that. Uh, just a few years ago, uh, they you know they tried the industry tried to sue Spotify for a billion dollars. Okay. Mm-hmm. For, for streaming, and I'm sure they have some other things. They have some other things in place, but the concept was was still the same. And the industry looked at it. They looked at it as a streaming platform that you know that was wiggled around, and they actually you know they lost. You know, uh, Spotify won that, and so um, so <clears throat> you know until the, until they until they close up. You know. A, a lot of gaps, you know, is still going, it, it, it will leave some lenience for, you know, for some people to still, you know, finagle their way through the, through the loops and cracks to a certain degree. But that's probably, you know, that's probably the best bet that they had. If they're going to take them down, give them, give them a, a, a fine that's manageable, but anything, you know, you get to talking 10, 15, 20, 90, hundred million and stuff like that. You might as well, you might as well chalk it up because nobody's getting ready to get it. And the the cycle is going to continue anyway. And so all you did was just spent your lawyers to get this astronomical amount and nothing. So, you know, you know, it's funny, right? Is that, I mean, I, I have, I have a few services that I've been, that I've been gifted that I use and I, and I've had access to for a while, but the interesting thing is now there's so much free content out there. <laughs> well, I guess it happened. <laughs> DVD King boy, you a fool. That's all I can say. <laughs> DVD King said, remember Target said Nitro was going to get. <laughs> I, I wonder what he was trying to imply, ladies and gentlemen. I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah. You know, I, I like, you know, I, I, I honestly, man, I, I sort of like dude. He was like, he, you know, he was, he was trendy and, and, you know, made some, you know, made some, some serious advancements, uh, for the cause. But after his situation, man, you know, all of the, the being all on TV and CBS and, you know, they not bringing nobody else and all this other kind of stuff. I think that, Oh, he was on TV. You didn't see it? No. Oh, I man. missed that, dude. Man, he was all he was on. He was on CBS with with the on the news, man. I, I'll I'll send, I'll send it to you once we're done. You uh, talking about Omar? Yeah, and I missed that. Yeah, so it was there. He it was on CBS uh, on one of the morning shows out there in Philly. Good lord! And uh, then they did a, another uh, televised radio broadcast <clears throat> where they where they filmed it and put it on uh, put it on one of the uh, not on one of his vlogs but uh, something else. And I end up I end up coming across it too. But yeah, it, it was sort of you know like I say if you know do he you can't take you you really can't take anything from him because he he handled. Why he was in, he did what he was supposed to do. All right. But it was the stuff that came to like, you know, if you sitting up there and you're like, Yeah, I did this, and uh I don't see why they're not messing with nobody else. They're not taking all it's it's thousands of other people out here and blah 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 blah. And then but they messing with me. Right. <laughs> so <clears throat> telling on himself. Ooh. So you know, when when I when I saw that, you know, um, I'm like, damn, that's not, that's not good. You, you know? know what he was doing? He was acting like for anyone who's seen this movie, The Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. The man went down there, raped everybody in their stocks and investments, then goes to jail for like half a year. He done hid money across seas, and now he's coming back like he's some fucking hero trying to help resurrect the industry that he took advantage of. To keep his income coming in, is that what it's starting to sound like? 
Yeah, it 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 was something, man. I I I wish it wouldn't have. I wish it wouldn't have played out that way because I think I think he could have handled that differently. Because okay. pretty much what it did was just just took that and deflected across the whole community, you know. Okay. So, so we already know that that IPTV is a huge thing. All right, we, we know it's a we know it's a huge thing. So the the extra theatrics not even you know it's not even it, it really wasn't even calls for oh and, and so i i you know and this was like like right after that stuff happened like like in a matter of two three weeks you know and so um you know it's uh it, it's it wasn't good man it wasn't good at all you know, the interesting thing about IPTV is now is that, you know, as I said before, is that there's so much free content that's available out there that beyond beyond having access to pay-per-views and and some of the sporting events, I mean, there's a lot you can get out there without ever having to, to pay for, you know, to pay for anything, whether it be a cable service or IPTV service or, or one of the other streaming services like like YouTube TV or Hulu Live or anything. There's a lot you can get out there. You know, for me, like when I, you know, when I started actually looking at how to even find stuff online and stream, part of it was because I wanted to watch the Tour de France live and I couldn't find it in the US. So I started looking at how to find those streams elsewhere. I know you guys laughing at my cycling, but <laughs> You know, you know, you know, we is, you normally don't hear that. Somebody say, "Well, I want to stream so I can watch UFC." And you said, "I want to stream so I can watch Tour de France." Right, and it just, it just sort of like, it just took me, it just took me by surprise. But you know, that, that, that's cool. Yeah, but you know, the thing, thing is, is that you have to be of a brother. It's yeah. just, brothers are extremely complex. You yeah. know. Most of us don't want to see balls wiggling around on a seat going up and down a hill. It's going to the complexity of a brother named Larry. And I support that. It's it's cool, man. I like I like cooking shows. So I, you know, See, I, there you go. There you go. So but my but my point is is that there's besides besides probably the sports element of IPTV and you know, which includes the pay-per-views, a lot of the content that's out there you can get elsewhere. And I think a lot of people I think after some of these big things started to get shut down, I think some people started to look for it elsewhere. And and I, and I we've seen, especially during this whole lockdown thing, we've seen a lot of these companies making it easier to actually watch their content. And I think they're going to find that it's beneficial to them to continue to make it easier for people to watch their content for free because they're going to find they're going to have a whole lot more access to individuals, maybe when it comes to, the advertisement, like I could very, I could very likely see companies like Showtime and HBO saying, "Hey, you know, those networks saying, hey, maybe we should put an ad-supported, you know, uh, version of our app out there that has some of may, maybe it's not all the latest content, maybe it's some of the older shows that we have had, or maybe, you know, if we have a series, let's say West Westworld is out right now, maybe mm -hmm. all the subscribers get Westworld right now." But as soon as the series is over, we'll put it as ad supported on the other on the other uh, app, and then people can watch it after the season's over. I, I can see there's 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 going to be some there's going to be some changes I think happening with these networks, and it's going to yeah. have to change. It's yeah. going to have to change. It's going to be just like it was when people was using Napster, and then Spotify came and leveraged the playing field. The same thing is going to happen with these streaming services. It's just a matter of who's going to be the one to prevail in the end. Well, they had to do something because they were, you know, especially with the music industry, they had to find a way to to monetize streaming because people were just downloading like crazy. They were just like, I'm just going to go download from what was it? Bear Share and Napster. Napster. And what was yeah. the other one? They had a big one. There was another big one that was out there. I can't remember, but people were just they were just downloading everything. So. Mm -hmm. They had to find a way to monetize it, and and these streaming services have been great. I think, you know. All so. right, y'all. We're gonna move right along to the last segment, well, the second to the last segment. Of this show, the coronavirus update. How to keep you from being taken advantage of? What the banks are thinking, and what's going on? So, first and foremost, I want to shout out my homie Tim 
He's got a family member that he took to the doctor, didn't have the flu, but they got tested for coronavirus and the results will come in Friday. And we're wishing him well as we talk a little bit about coronavirus. Everybody in here know Tim. We still waiting to see when Tim going to get his own YouTube because everybody loves him more than they love us. So <laughs> you, know, if you get those YouTube, let me ride your back a little bit because damn, no. damn. And we all, we sending them up for you, brother. We yeah, hope we your are. family gets well. So yeah, we are. what's going on with coronavirus? So banks have reported as of today that they are not at all happy with the terms set forth in the helicopter money and in the um, pay protection plan that was supposed to be ushered out by the SBA via the banks. So the banks are upset that, number one, the government dropped the rate to a half a percent from 4%. The banks mm -hmm. want a 4% income. The banks are also upset that the wording is not in a manner where they can escape culpability if people pop up and do frauds with the money. So they want the government to go back mm -hmm. and fix that. And the other issue that is going on, banks are not even working with you unless you have an account in their bank. So what does that mean? Well, first of all, the government came back and they moved the interest rate up to 1% for that SBA oh. loan pay protection plan. That's a start. And they are trying to write the terms for people who are independently contracted, self-employed, sole proprietors, so that you can start satisfying these loans. To this point, only, only $330,000 have been given out since Friday when the loan opened. Larry. Wow. Considering the banks have been bailed out numerous amounts of times, do they have a platform to be sitting up here saying they're worried that people are going to defraud them? Well, no, but we know that we know that the government's going to look out for them. So, you know, I was I was just talking about this earlier with my wife and I was saying I really think that um, and I know this sounds probably a, a bit socialist and all and some people may not like that, but I really think that there needs to be maybe some sort of uh, federal bank or state bank where people can actually have individual accounts. I know we have our federal reserve system, but individuals can't have individual accounts with them. But you know, part of that is because they were saying that it's going to take maybe all the way up until, you know, like 26 weeks or something they said in order 23, 26 weeks to get these checks out to people. Because if you did not file for direct deposit, they don't have your info, your bank info, in order to, to uh, direct deposit this $1,200. And so for someone like me, I, I would have to get a physical check because, you know, I mean, as a small business person, I pay taxes. I have to pay out my taxes. I don't get tax refunds. I have to pay out every, every quarter. And mm -hmm. so they're, I'm not, I don't have, they don't have my, my banking info because I don't ever expect to get a refund from them. But, um, you know... I just think that if they, if every, and especially if you, if you talk about, especially with low income people, people in rural areas, people in the hood, they don't always have bank accounts. So if they had state banks or federal banks where people can actually have their own individual accounts. So when there are instances where people need to get state or federal funds, whether that be, you know, a tax refund or a welfare payment or an unemployment payment or a pension payment or whatever it is that they need to get that it can go directly to that account if they don't have another account and that way you know the government can just simply make those payments those disbursements really quickly without having to have the for one the, the cost of physically printing checks and sending them out they can just do all those things electronically and but in order to do that, obviously, you would need actual banks. And I think that, I mean, it could be a big boom for the banking industry, especially if if the government said, we're going to create these banks, but we're going to contract it out to, say, City or Lehman or, or you know, or whoever to Wells Fargo or Bank of America. If they contracted out those banks, I think it could be a big boom for the banking industry, for one, and it could be very helpful to the citizenry. T-Streams. Is the banking industry going to get their act together or are they going to keep complaining to the government about how to disperse money that's supposed to be given to the people and the businesses? Well, in the end, in the end, banks are private, you know, are, are, are privately owned companies insured by the federal government. Mm 
So I am going to lean towards the fact that they're probably going to keep bitching until they until they get some type of some type of concession that suits that they think suits them. Now, if it's a matter of fraud, I don't think. I really don't think it's going to, you know, no attempt is going to, is going to fraud proof everything is mm -hmm. when you, when you get to saying that checks is getting ready to roll out, somebody going to find a way to get their hands on some of that money, regardless if it's a dollar. Okay. So, um, I think they're still going, I think they're still going to, uh, you know, going to, um, to request, you know, certain things uh, to be set in place for them. Now, why they, you know, why they whining about it, I really don't understand because I'm sure that the government is is insuring every dollar that they send to them anyway. So, uh, you know, so maybe it's just, you know, I'm not sure what all stipulations or things like that. Um, you know, so it's that's one of the things you, you really just have to sit back and sort of watch and see if it becomes uh, see if it becomes a lobbying match for for these uh, institutions, because it can you know, it can easily be shifted. You know, it can easily be shifted and we lose we lose the entire focus of what was supposed to happen in the first place, because, again, these are privately owned companies, you know. Um, uh, they are, they're, you know, stockholders and, and shareholders hold, you know, hold parts into these. And so they want, you know, they're going to definitely want to see what's in their best interest because at the end of the day, they want something out of it too. Of course they do. Yeah. Uh, my man, Mike Willie's asking, what do you guys think the economy will look like when this is all over? And that's a good question. Um, you know, yeah. I think that, over time, the economy is going to recover and it's going to be back to normal. It's just how long and what industries are going to be reached. Uh oh, froze did up lose, there. Did we lose Lamont? I think we. I think he froze up. There we I'm go. Back. He's back. <laughs> back. I'm back. See, All right, you froze that's up. That's the government conspiracy, ladies and gentlemen. They don't want a <laughs> smart, educated black man that has a little bit of wealth. Yeah, <laughs> they want they want to cut me off before I give y'all the real deal. I think that it's just a matter of time before we recover, but how much time, and what industries emerge out of this mess to be leading the pack? Because one thing that companies are doing right now, all these companies that have had to shut down their physical locations and are having to adapt and learn how to make money online. You can cool believe they taking that data right now and cross-referencing should we even have a physical location if we can do this online streaming or download. I think we talked about this last week with the movie theater. Right. If AMC is thinking about filing bankruptcy right now as we speak and talking about coming back, resurrecting some kind of a downloadable pay system for you to get movies in your home. So. Right. It's just a matter of us watching what industries are going to be able to um, change their model and maybe close up shop. But then you've got some industries you can always bank on that are never going to close. They're never going to get rid of the airlines. They're never going to get rid of banks. Hospitals ain't going nowhere. So there are going to be some industries that stay. But the retail market, which is what they're really talking about, some of them might be in serious jeopardy. And I don't see that stuff recovering until well after Christmas, if it can even recover this Christmas. Yeah. Right. I, I think you're going to see also there's going to be a big change in the way people shop in general, because I, I think a lot of people have gotten used to shopping online to buy things like, mm -hmm. you know, computers or clothes or shoes or some things. But I think with so many people now shopping for their groceries online, I would not be surprised at all if we actually just saw a whole new just a whole new entity. I mean, you, it may be where Amazon steps in and fills that void or something, but I think we're going to see a lot more grocery shopping online and mm -hmm. that, that whole market segment is going to expand where people are no longer going to say, I'm going to the grocery store. They're just going to simply go online and buy all their groceries and have them delivered. And that's going to change a lot because I mean, we've already seen where we have, 
you know, grocery stores where people have stockers and, you know, the stock of the, uh, the people who stock the shelves and the checkers and all that. And even there, the checkers have been losing their jobs to the self checkout stands. But what happens when people are just like, I'm not going to the grocery store anymore. I'm just ordering online. Well, now all you really need are people to manage the warehouse and drivers and that's it. You know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I mean, you might need some tech people on the back end, but you know, you, it's not going to be the, you, you're, you're talking about losing a lot of jobs if that happens. Right. So and with this, uh, <clears throat> a, a lot of that is really going to determine on how long things are the way they are right now, mm -hmm. because they can't, you know, they can't start to rebuilding until they get a grasp on the way things are are done right now. So right now, everybody there's there's been a paradigm shift in the way our lives are conducted now than what they were just two three months ago. So right. uh, so there's definitely there's definitely a, a, a new standard uh, put into place be, be because of all of this. And Lamont, you was right. Chrysler is still going to be around. Walmart still going to be around. You know, these these big these big entities is going to still be here. But the the driving the driving force of the economy, which is the small business, mm -hmm. a lot of them are going to take some. They're going to they're going to take some 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 massive hits. And there's there's going to be people that, you know, that are in good spots and good positions right now. You know, six months from now, they're not going to be in those good positions, especially if things continue to, to roll on the way that the way they are now. You know, I, me personally, I feel odd today myself. I had to I actually had to get out and and uh, pay the uh, pay the leases on my my uh, commercial properties and stuff. And I'm just sitting up here. I'm like. Damn, I've been closed for three weeks and not near one of these places brought in not one dollar. Mm. You know, they they still, you know, I, I still had to get out and, you know, and, and do that. But the thing is, you know, everybody is having to do that. OK, so so what happens if it rolls on another month? You got to do it again. All right. And then what happens if it rolls on another month? You had so so now the the small business owners, you know, a lot of them are going a lot of them are going to collapse and that's going to that's going to cause a big delay in how the economy recovers because the economy does not recover on the likes of of the big 3 and Walmart and Target and mm -hmm. Home Depot and stuff like that it's the the stuff that you see in between right those, <laughs> in between those junctures that's that's actually uh, that's actually pushing the economy and keep a, and keeping folks going. So right. you know, December would be great. It would be lovely, you know. Uh, but I would definitely, you know, I would definitely, if I could share one good tip with with either you guys, I would definitely be prepared. You know, uh, you know, live. Here's the saying, you know, live like no other right now, so that you can live like no other later. And so if you have an extra, if you have an extra few bucks to set up, you know, you, you put that away because, you know, the, the tightest part of the recovery haven't even started yet. Right. You know, we, yeah. we just, we just touching the surface of it right now, this month, right now, everybody just sort of going like, damn, you know, man, I got to pay. But once it's the, once it, once that action has to start coming back again, and he was like, well, damn, I didn't pay this fifteen hundred dollar lease last month. And we didn't we we couldn't bring nothing in. You know, we we, we got barbers that need to, to eat. And, and, you know, we got to eat. You know, I can't sell my product if I if I have a store or anything like that. And so it's just man. And then you're trying to take care of home, too. Man, that's a nightmare for some folks right now. It's and, rough, man. And, yeah. and that, that's pure wisdom you gave. If people, you've got extra coins, sit on them. My, yeah. my real estate mentor, I talk to him usually weekly, every week. He basically said, Mont, sit on your money. Go look for real estate, but don't buy nothing right now because we're just starting to get into the economic downturn. Because like T Streams is saying, right now, you know, some people might be going through their emergency savings 
or some people might just went through it. The real damage, we're not going to see that until June, July. That's when the real damage is going to happen. And if yeah. you are someone who has resources, you could put yourself in a pretty good position. And I hate to say it like that, but that's what this country has done. That's the way the economy works. If you've yeah. got cash that you're sitting on top of and you can survive and ride this thing out by August, September, when you start seeing where are the deals, where are the opportunities in the economy, you'll be able to do something. And I'm just hoping and praying that everyone is in position to at least just survive through this thing, because the issue we don't know is when are we going to get there? That's yeah. what we don't know. Right. You know, it's going to be interesting. Some of the businesses that traditionally are able to survive, you know, and thrive after coming out of something is, you know, are things like bars, you know, clubs where people go to gather and they can, you know, like you can't replace that. You can't order that online. Mm -hmm. You can't, off, you, can, you know, you can't, you can't offshore that. That's, that's those, those are jobs and work that has to be done here. Right. But when you're coming off of something like this, where you have the whole social distancing thing and people worried about getting sick just from being around other people, it really makes you wonder how long is it going to take before people really feel safe to actually go back out there exactly. and, and go hang out at the bars? How long is it going to take before the, you know you decide, OK, yeah, it's cool. I'm, I'm ready to go back to the strip club and get a lap dance. You know, yeah. do you really want the Rona chick on your lap? Yeah. You know? Depends I mean, it's just, I mean, it's one of those things we really have to think about, you know, how long is the, how long is the, the psychological effect of this going to last on people? So, but I, I, I think definitely they're going to have to make some, 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 they're going to have to make some real infrastructure changes. They're going to have to make some serious changes just to the way that people work, because there's going to be a lot of jobs out there where employees are going to sit around, it's going to sit up and say, look, I've been working effectively from home for the last two months. There's absolutely no reason for me to risk my life coming into that office. There's no reason for me to spend, you know, out of every week, there's no need for me to spend 10 or 15 or 20 hours, a, you know, on the roads or on a train or wherever going back and forth to work when I can do my job just as well from my, from my living room table or from my living room couch or my dining room table or whatever. So I think there's going to have to be some real, structural changes to the way companies and, and agencies do business. Mm -hmm. I agree. And in and, and more COVID-19 news, I want you guys to be very aware of the scams going on out there as well. There's an old thing called a phishing scam where they send you an email. It used to be where it'd be like a damn African print saying, um, I, you know, I want to give you $2 million. All you got to do is um, take 3,500, put it in your bank account, blah, 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 don't do it. So now they're doing that same type of scheme with COVID-19 in Cash App, fellas. Someone will send you an email via the link you've got with Cash App, and they'll say, I want to donate to you because of COVID-19, $5,000, but you first need to call this number, and we need to put you on the website, and then we'll give you the code. If you see that, ladies and gentlemen, do not do it. Basically, the way it works out is that when these people say they're going to give you this money, they might put it in your bank account and then they'll they'll wire it to a different account. And guess who's and guess who's on the hook for the money that was put into your bank account that's all of a sudden missing? You are. So you've got to be very careful about that. And the other scam that I'm seeing people doing is they're calling you on the phone, pretending they're the government saying that you owe X, Y, and Z you need to pay because of whatever dealing with COVID-19, folks, the government is never going to call you. They're going to always send you a certified letter or mail whenever they need to correspond with you. Larry and T, have y'all seen any of these schemes so far? Yeah, well, my, my wife got something. My, my wife got something similar uh, that that came you know that that came through us to to pay off into to pay off into something some type of recovery fund or some garbage you know this is one of them this is one of them times where everybody you know if, if you haven't if you have not in your life or it's been a long time that you that you've had to say i'm a grown-ass man 
or a grown ass woman. This is the perfect time for you to say that and not fall for some of this garbage. It is a lot of it going around. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's amazing when you sit there and you see, you know, uh, you know, somebody has to somebody has to sit here and orchestrate this this whole stuff. And the sad thing about it is that there's hundreds of people falling for this this stuff every, every day. day. And yeah. the, the sad thing about it is that it's is is hitting those who are relatively poor and needy. You know, and they're, they're they're using their their last resources, you know, just to try to come up on the 25 or 30. The, the ones I've been seeing has been like, you know, you 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 donate this or you put this and then we give you this and this and then you can get 35 to 5500 back. Thir negative. All right. This this is this is your time to put your grown people draws on. And, you know, when you see that or if you even if you see other people falling for it, you know, just 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 stay away from it. It, it won't do nothing but but cause you headache in the end, because mm -hmm. these people out here. Remember this. These people out here do not have your best interest at heart. OK, when it comes to them, they are scheming for a dollar. All right. Regardless how many dollars it is. And yeah, it, we, we've seen it. You know, we've seen it. I, it. I see it every day, but we actually got one. We actually got one uh, through through the mail and through email. And so so, you know, don't think because something says or has an emblem of a seal or, you know, or something on it that that makes it look official, you know. Uh, I, I tell you, uh, Adobe, you know, Adobe, Photoshop, uh, Microsoft Word, all that stuff can make some very a scanner can make some very, very convincing documents. Mm -hmm. And uh, it takes nothing. It takes nothing but putting your name sometimes or your email into a website just to log in for others to be able to get access to your email in an email list. OK, um, if you don't think that it, if you don't think that is possible, you know, if you don't think that it's possible, maybe one of these days I can show you some of the the the, the email list. They they try to, you know, that, that companies try to sell me. And, you know, and they'll send you this stuff out, hoping that you'll you'll bite on to it. And folks do. I mean, the the law of averages works even in negative situations. And so and folks, they, they bite off into this mess. But, you know, it's, it's sick how people would try to capitalize off of the hardships of the current state that we're in. You know, uh, those are really selfish people. But if you have an opportunity to expose and save somebody from, you know, from losing their little savings, and uh, you know, because sometimes all somebody have is a hope in a hundred dollars, and if they think that they can get twelve hundred bucks by by investing seventy five of that hundred dollars into it, some people that may be a risk that some people can take, you know, and not knowing that hey. You about to take the back end of this bullet. And like you said, the way this stuff fishes around where, you know, where where's where you got one account tied to another and linked to another that comes back to the mail to another and deposit into a final account that, that, <laughs> that hurry up and man, it's crazy. Oh, my God. So, so yeah, just be careful out there, people. I, I will say this. I had some I had some good advice a long time ago from someone who told me. They <laughs> said it is impossible to con a non-greedy man. That's true. You just cannot do it. If you are out there, if if you know the government is supposed to give you twelve hundred dollars, but you think somehow that you're going to be able to to finagle that twelve hundred dollars into five grand. Because somebody reached out to you online and said, "Oh, I have a scheme that can help you get this. Turn your twelve hundred into five thousand. If you're just simply not greedy and you just recognize, I'm supposed to get twelve hundred, not five thousand. I'm going to stick with my twelve hundred. You'll be fine. 
Now you might have your neighbor who says, I'm gonna go for that 5,000. The next thing you know, they don't have that 5,000 and they don't have their 1,200 either. They're just broke with nothing. So, I mean, people, if, if you're not willing to put that money at risk, they can't take it from you. Now, obviously people can hack into accounts and steal from you. The people can just straight steal from you. That's not what we're talking about. But as far as conning you out of your money, if you're not a greedy person and you don't try and hustle, so you don't try and hustle up, you know, some, some ridiculous return, some ridiculous short-term return, you know, you'll be fine. Just don't do it. Just, just remember, look, I'm supposed to get $1,200. That's what I have. That's what I'm going to work with. Don't try and turn your 1200 into 5,000. Cause there's really generally, there's no legal way to make a quick buck. There's just most of the time there's not. I mean, yes, sometimes you go on the stock market and buy some stock and all of a sudden it explodes because you bought it at the right time and you can make a bunch of money. Great. You can do that. Maybe you can go buy yourself a, you know, buy yourself a, a, a half a key or something and you can cut it up and put your boys on the street. Oh, and you can go. There's ways you can do it, but most of the time they're not legal or they're real risky. So just don't be greedy. If you know you're supposed to get it's just like people at work. If you know that you're supposed to get 10 bucks an hour to work 40 hours a week, don't have your don't have your buddy at work to clock you in early. You know, just don't do it. Don't be greedy. Hey man, if you, if you got one or two, three hours, you can go to that club when the corona is over, man. You might make yourself two or twelve hundred a night. You know what I'm saying? Magic Mike style. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> <laughs> That's if people want to go to the club. People may not want to be in that busy, crowded place. But I can tell you, when they tell us we can leave the house again, I'm not going to be out there doing the same thing I was doing before. I'm not going to be hanging out, going to the mall or, or going to a club or anything. I don't want to do any of that stuff because I don't believe it. I think it's still going to be out there lingering, just waiting for it, for it to pop up again. Yeah, well, there's definitely going to be a social stigma that's that's going to be about, about doing it. I think it'll probably be over the whole planet, except for Detroit here, these Negroes here are probably waiting for them to say you can go back. They going head in first. Oh no, trust me. It's the South, bro. I mean, <laughs> it's, I mean, like I was just watching something the other day where they interviewed this lady going to church. The guy was like, ma'am, you're about to go to a congregation where a thousand people refuse to stay home in your city. They keep going to this church. Aren't you worried about what you're giving these other people? She was like, I'm covered in the blood. <laughs> and dude was like, well, ma'am, doesn't his blood cover you with knowledge to understand that when you go to Walmart, Chick-fil-A, wherever you're going, and she was rattling off all these stores she go to, and she said she wasn't worried about getting sick from them because she's covered in the blood of Jesus, her Savior. Yeah, he should have told her that faith without, faith, faith, faith without works is dead, too. So you can believe all you want to believe, but if you're not playing your part, you know, God didn't raise no dummies. If they you're say, not God, your part, they say parent, God helps the child who helps himself. He doesn't, he don't, he don't want to see you out there testing him, challenging him. Well, you know? apparently, apparently she is a dummy and her church is full of a thousand dummies because they all showed up to church that day and they all out here going to have people sick. And they're going to wind up like that church in Mississippi where the whole congregation got Corona. I don't know if y'all heard about that. Church. Yeah, man. It was a church of about 600 people and two out of every three people got coronavirus. Jeez. Yeah, man. So we, I'm going to cut it there, fellas. Are y'all able to go live tomorrow with this same crowd? Yeah, we can go again you if you want to go again. Me, man, I'm, hey. I'm here. Hey, we'll do it again tomorrow. As always, I'm going to let Larry end on this one after I say what I got to say. Folks, this is nothing to play with. Um, not only are you having to deal with taking care of your family's health, but now as we see, you're also having to deal with taking care of your family's safety in terms of con artists and scams coming at you out the wazoo. Fortify your family. Talk with your family. Educate everybody in your house exactly why it is so important to social distance stay home as much as you possibly can and let them know just how precious they are to you and what they can do to protect your household from any threat t streams i give it to you yeah you know um i just want to send it you know i just want to send a word of encouragement we you know we 
every day we we wake up, we turn on the TV or turn on the radio. We cannot, you know, we cannot avoid hearing anything uh, negative or or anything that's really, you know, really depressing. But, you know, I just want to encourage you guys to, uh, you know, keep pushing forward. You know, the, the you know, we're we're getting ready to walk into the eye of the storm, you know, and uh, it's going to take, you know, it's going to take some real resolve, some some will and, you know, some natural resilience to be able to, you know, to be able to bounce back. So, you know, uh, you know, guard, you know, guard your finances. Uh, think wisely on, you know, on the decisions that you had to make, you know, continue to, you know, practice safe practices to keep you and your, keep you and your family safe uh, because you don't, you don't have to be a part of the people that's, you know, that's not going to, to make it when things actually, when the shit actually hits the fan, you know? So it, it requires some, some, some good mental thinking now and preparing you know, this is not one of them, them times where you should be doing uh, day to day. You know, you have to you know, you have to think this thing tactfully uh, because, you know, if, if you've heard the saying only the strong survive, this is this is one of those those occasions where where that rule of thumb will definitely apply. So continue to stay, you know, continue to stay positive. You know, Easter is coming up. No need for no big three, four hundred dollar Easter meal, you know. Can't nobody really hold it down, but you and a few folks that's in your home right now, uh, you know, save your coins, get get ready, get ready for the storm that's coming. And then hopefully we can all we can all look back, you know, remembering that right now you are living in the time that historians that's not even born yet is going to write about in the future. So, you know, take that into consideration. It, you know, this this is a historic time for our for our country and our planet. Right. On right. you, Larry. Oh, uh, as we get out of here, let me just let me just bring up two quick points I want to touch on. One of them is that I thought it was a hoax, but apparently it is it is actually true that a tiger at the Brooklyn Zoo tested positive for coronavirus. I saw that. that. Yeah. Apparently the zookeeper actually had corona, passed it on to the tigers. So Let's pray for uh, Carol Baskin down there in uh, in Florida that she does not pass on Corona to her tigers and Joe and uh, and uh, Joe Exotic doesn't do it, but he's in jail, so I guess he'll be all right. Larry, and, uh, it's a crazy world when pussies is getting coronavirus. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's 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 out of control, man. It's out of control. It's out and of control. The other the other thing I want to mention is I know last time I, I joked and I said, hey, you know, wash your nuts, put some water on your balls, sitting on the couch. But I would like to say this to people. Put some powder on your balls so you don't grow some mushrooms down there. I know we're all sitting around on the couch getting sweaty down there. And, you know, I don't want anybody getting any any uh, any jock itch. I don't want anybody getting any any. Uh, you know, any yeast infection. So put some powder down, get some gold bonds, get some Johnson and Johnson. Put some talc down there if you need to. Just powder your nutsack up and your or your or your coochie or your coochie pouch so that you don't end up with mushrooms growing down there. And those are my last words. Thank you. Words. Can I say one more thing before? Yeah, you go for it. Go for it. I, you know, just uh, just wanted to uh to to let you guys know that uh uh that both my son and my daughter. My my son is twenty six and my daughter is twenty one. She's in the navy. My son is a construction guy. And uh, both of them hit me up today and at two different points because uh, my wife, my, my daughter is, is in the Navy in Arkansas. So my kids are not around each other. And both of them hit me up today and was like, my son told me that his girlfriend was seven weeks pregnant. And my daughter called me and told me that she was nine weeks pregnant. So it looks like I'm about wow. to be granddad. So I got okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's getting ready to go. It's getting ready to go. Congratulations, hey. congratulations, man! Says, brother, man, yeah. you the you're gonna be the youngest looking granddaddy in all of America. Your wife better have you under lock and damn key. You <laughs> you, me, bro, bro, you, you, the, you the youngest looking thing on this panel, and you about to be a grand glam dad, man. That's, That's crazy. crazy. That is great. Yeah, that man. Is great. Come on. I'm. I'm 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 on the better half towards 50 now. So it's uh 
So my next, yeah. Ooh. That's wow. great, man. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Hey, man, I'm going to let you knock one of them back for me, bro, because <laughs> 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 I ain't got no complaints. I'm sitting there here complaining about one little girl, and, boy, you about to be a granddad times two, um, you know? Say Lamont, man, when she she when she 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 first told me, uh, she she sent me a little April Fool's prank, and the the, the first thing I the first thing I was like, no, you better not be, you know, because <laughs> uh, I don't I don't play I don't I don't play April Fool's jokes, and so you know she later told me she she was she she was she didn't know how to to actually tell me, so I had to wait a couple of days before she before she ended up telling me. And so I'm still I'm still trying to still trying to process it, you know, but, you know, hey, it is what it is, man. Hey, man, that's good news, man. That's good news. You still. What, in the what, do, you, what do you folks say down in the south? They say you are blessed and highly favored. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> highly favored, bro. That did. Your DNA wants to keep swimming for more and more generations. It ain't done swimming. Yeah. <laughs> hey. 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 <laughs> out of here. That's great news to go on. Yeah. Yep. All right, everyone. Well, it's been fun. We've been on for a while, so I guess we'll hit you back up tomorrow for a uh, for another live stream. Keep you entertained, and uh, congratulations to both my brothers on the on the panel because both of them have kids and grandkids on the way. And if you guys are out there, if you need prayers, throw them in the comments section. We are all about trying to lift everybody up. If you have anything you want us to talk about. Make sure you hit up Lamont so that he can uh, he can add it on to his list of, of uh, topics to talk about. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, love, peace, and hair grease. Peace. All right, we up out of there. <laughs>